Anybody? Stories to tell? <laughs> Jokes? Well, we have, uh, Alex and I have some stories to, to tell from this last trip we went on. It was pretty crazy. Um, through Alex being Alex and who he is, like, uh, I was able to meet um, some of the most amazing, like, entrepreneurs, like, I've ever met. <clears throat> They're out in Arizona, and uh, one of them, his name is Isaac Shabbat. Um, they're all Israeli. And um, so Isaac started this company called Secret, <clears throat> spelled S-E-A-C-R-E-T. And um, his story and the company's story actually is, is fascinating. But they're, they immigrated um, and Isaac is just when um, that was the first time I I think I sat down with a net worth billionaire, you know, uh, and like such a nice guy, humble guy, but you can tell like he, he thinks it on a different level. After we left the meeting, I told Alex, I was like, man, we should sit down and just um, reflect upon the meetings that we had, especially the one with Isaac <clears throat> and uh because there was something different and Alex agreed. I couldn't put a, I still can't really put um, a word to it other than he had a presence, you know? Um, and he's a small guy. He's kind of like my height um, and not, doesn't have a booming voice or anything. He does talk really fast. So you can tell he thinks fast, but um, there's something about him that I still can't nail down. And you know, Alex and I were trying to figure it out. One thing, though that i i realized and i'm so glad i learned this lesson recently about uh, and i think i shared it here is uh <clears throat> sometimes um you know our when we when we refer to our gut and our intuition um it, we call it a gut feeling but i what i realized what it is is that your gut feeling is like multiple data points that you're collecting when you're um observing a situation or a person um, from the moment they walk in, right? How does their posture, you know, are they smiling, all that. So I learned that lesson to pay attention to the data points, you know, to pay attention to your gut feeling. Um, and uh, so I'm trying to pay attention to what makes this guy different because he clearly is. And one thing I, I know for sure is that when you spoke to him, he always kept eye contact. Like never once, like straight away, you know, like I, have, I'm sure I have undiagnosed ADD, <laughs> um, but like sometimes you'll be looking away or you can't just hold attention to the person and when they're speaking. That's one obvious thing I noticed that he, he just did whether on purpose or consciously or subconsciously is he always held his attention hundred percent, you know, so it felt like you're the only one in the room, right? So I'm sure there's so much other things that I could have took away from that. Um, it's just, I have to recall, but that's why I, uh, you know, brainstorm with Alex, but um, it was, it was a, it was a great weekend. A lot of learning lessons that I'll hopefully be able to share soon, but it was a great uh, meeting. Okay, cool. In fact, I think you got to come down to Arizona to on always down to go check out arizona yeah we can and we can invite everybody to come join us there's gonna be a lot of fun out there that's for sure <laughs> a lot of fun to, to pass around but hey speaking so, of which we should uh we should let everybody know about the tampa meetup do yeah. you got the flyer for that or does layla have it yeah uh somebody got it why don't you go ahead bro uh, so first weekend of February, if anybody happens to be or wants to be in Florida and Tampa, Saturday, February 4th, we're going to do an event um, with a group of investors. And really, it's just talking through the recession and talking about mindset, acquisitions, financing, creative strategies, and should be pretty informal, but 
pretty good network of folks. Sorry, my darn dog. Keep going. I'm going to go shut the door. Okay. So, yeah, this is going to be in Tampa. Um, I think it's the, Layla, is it the fourth? Fourth of February. Yes. Tampa, okay. right? Yep. Yeah, so, so I can drop the um, event information in the chat as well as the registration in case I'm not quite sure where everyone's at geographically, but maybe if somebody's mm -hmm. near Tampa, they might be interested to go. Gotcha. Okay. Actually, I just saw your <laughs> message in the chat, so <laughs> okay. go handle that for sure. Okay, I'll drop it in now. Thank you. So yeah, I know Florida is literally on the other side of the nation, <laughs> but we have a, such an awesome network out there that we're, we, you know, we've been fortunate enough to be brought into through um, Melina, <clears throat> Andrew, and Oscar guys from New Wealth, and Joel and Marianne. So uh, if, but it, I think it'll be worth it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> and it's there's a lot of investors out there where one of um, the investors is Sam and she's um, one of the stars on what is the name of the show? Uh, zombie House Slippers, I think it was called. Yeah, Zombie House Slippers. Have you guys watched uh, an episode yet? It's on HG. Greg, you have? Oh, Zombie Houses. Oh, you can't hear you, Greg. Hunting Zombie Houses is the title of the show. Oh, okay. Well, the uh, the network that we're coming into and, and actually building out with New Wealth in Tampa is awesome. You know, it's great people. So a lot, some of them were came um, from Tampa to Hawaii when we had our event here. We got to get guys like you, Ben, out to uh, either Hawaii or somewhere, or we got to go out to the Seattle side. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Is Tarl still doing his meetup or no? Okay, cool. Um, is Tarl done? You guys know, Ben? I don't, I don't know if he is. If he is, I don't know if he's actually at it anymore. Mm -hmm. sure. Testing, testing. There you go, Greg. Oh, all right. Um. Sorry, yeah, uh, um, I believe I've seen that show, you know what, but maybe I shouldn't say anything because there was another show that was kind of, oh, it was Murder House Flip. That was the one that I saw, okay. Uh -huh. There's a house called Murder House Flip that like, I, I was like, oh, this sounds like it's gonna be really interesting, right? <laughs> and, uh, it sucked. So that was the one I was, I was thinking of. They're really starting to reach nowadays, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't remember the zombie one though. Maybe that one's good. <laughs> that's awesome. Murder house flip. That sounds fantastic. We should buy some. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. And then I remember thinking this show sucks. <laughs> not what you thought at all. Like, I don't know. I, th I think they were reaching. Yeah. They were just trying to capture an audience. So yeah. Yeah. Well, if anybody happens to be in Tampa or wants to come down to that area, um, we're doing one there. And then in April, I think it's April, we're going to do one in Las Vegas. So um, if anybody is interested, just let us know. Uh, April 21 and 22nd. Uh, so, uh, we're not trying to compete with other people who do gatherings, but we're definitely trying to do everything we can to um, just create an opportunity to bring together the people that, that, are kind of in our tribe and, and see if we can help each other. I'm not trying to grow a big, huge network here. We're not necessarily trying to, and we're not trying to sell anything. So um, the objective really is just to, to hang out and help each other. So it's a little different, it seems like, than some of the others. Yeah. I mean, we could try to sell you something, but I feel like everywhere else we go, we're trying to sell something. So it's like, it's so annoying. I don't know if anybody else is annoyed by it, but there you go. <laughs> I like that we can dive deep into <clears throat> things, you know, topics or, you know, and it's kind of free. There's no real hell of a, like agenda we're held to or anything like that. You know, it's just kind of us of what we thought 
it was going to be when we first started it, right? It's just a bunch of people who love real estate and entrepreneurship just getting on a call every Friday and talking about everything in the market. Um, actually, since we have Chris on, um, Chris, I don't know. I don't want to put you on the spot or anything, but if you want to give an update on what the uh, retail side is looking like when it comes to conventional loans or, and then also I want to propose uh, that if anybody's interested to see what they um, perhaps could qualify for, for like a bank statement loan. I know we're investors, but like, again, I, I think you would, you qualify, you probably qualify for more than you think as a real estate investor with, with the bank, bank statement loan. But Chris, any new uh, things going on? Oh, he looks like he's in a meeting. <laughs> sorry, you, sorry, I was, I was talking to uh, somebody just walked in the office right now. Um, oh, shoot. Yeah, I can, I, okay. No so worries, dude. No worries. No, you're good. You're good. What's up, everybody? Um, Aloha Friday. Yeah, the market's it's picking back up. You know, we're starting to see more applications now, which is rates that you know rates decline these these past couple of weeks. So, but now, but now they're starting to they're starting the bonds starting to go back up a little bit. But you know, we're we're in a good spot. You know, we're just um, just hanging so hanging on tight. That roughly about six percent. But you know, like you like the range is from five and a half to six and a half. You know what I mean? Right. Obviously, if you go if you go to the five and a half mark, you're gonna pay you know, an arm and a leg for points, which I, I've been pitching to clients today. Like it doesn't make sense to buy down the rate today. Cause right. if you refinance next year, if you refinance next year, I mean, you're basically wasting your money for buying down the rate. Cause you're going to spend, you know, five grand, 10 grand, you know, depends on the loan amount. And so I tell them take like a medium rate, maybe a higher rate and get all your closing costs paid for. So you pay, yeah. you know, zero in closing costs. And then when you refinance next year, then you go after the lowest interest rate and all that, you know, it just puts you, that's one of the things, like I, I send out the, the total cost analysis. I don't know if you've, you've seen that before, Corey, but, you know, it really, it really gives, you know, the borrowers options, Yeah. you know, spreadsheets, it, it educates them. You know what I mean? I, I put, I give them all the information and say, Hey, this is my opinion. But here's a spreadsheet, here's bar graphs, here's the interest you're going to pay in, in, you know, maybe two years on a 30 year note, because if you refinance. And so there's just different mortgage strategies that I can, uh, that I can structure. And so, yeah, a good spot though. Yeah. So the, the rates have gone down. They're probably looking at another rate hike next month, right? In the next uh, um, announcement. Yeah, it, the, market, the market's already priced that in. It's crazy because. Oh wow! Back in, yeah. yeah, back in early December, I was pricing out a loan, right? And I didn't lock it yet. I just I I kept floating it, and then I locked it in in mid like last week after the rate hike, and I got a better <clears throat> price than I did in early January. So mm. that tells me that the market was already pricing in the the Fed's rate hike, you know? and so nothing really changed. It actually got better, and so that's what like it's basically what I'm seeing is the market is is like not on the same page as the feds. You know, they're already pricing in what they think and then the feds are kind of doing their thing and raising interest rates, whatever, you know what I mean? And so it's well, kind of interesting. Like at first, like the like the market was kind of following the fed. And then now like, it seems like the, the market's kind of adjusting before the fed because word gets out. Like, I think it's pretty known already too. That's going to be 25 basis points. You know, I'd be kind of surprised if it's not, but um like what does that do is that going to instill confidence in the market is it but we still haven't seen unemployment really hit yet you know so what's scary is that like they keep bumping the rates and if the market keeps adjusting ahead of time then now the fed yeah they're going out they're 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 adjusting ahead so i'm wondering if the lag time because usually there's a lag of a few, like a few months or so to see the any type of movement um, right. in the economy, so yeah, I don't I have no idea. That's a hard. The, the scary part right now is the the government is running out of money. Yeah, they're legit running out of money, and so you know they're freaking out over there, trying to figure out what to do. 
Uh, nobody's buying bonds right now. And so it's keeping up that 10 year treasury bond. And it's just, uh, it, it's an interesting time right now. It, it is, you know, I don't think any of us have seen this, you know, it's, it's very interesting. So well, they've had this many happen. times, though, right? Where like the they have to lift the debt ceiling and stuff. Like, there's only one option: is to lift, uh, what are they? They're are we are we just gonna default? <laughs> you know, I, exactly. I I think that's more uh, catastrophic than anything else at this point. But it's kind of pick your poison. Exactly. Yeah. Um, exactly. But there's you know it's still uh, a great, still a great time to buy. It's a great time to buy. You yeah. know, I, that's what I tell people. It's you know, you can't really time the bottom, right? No, you really can't. And, but right now we're in, we're at the halfway part, at the halfway mark of the bottom. You know what I mean? It could, it could get worse. It, you know, we could be at the peak. Nobody knows. And so I tell people, it's like, if you're going to, if you have a plan and you're going to keep that property for X amount of years, you know, it doesn't really matter what, you know, your interest rate is today or because you're going to refinance. It just opens up opportunities, you know, to refinance. And then yeah. uh, the market's going to come. The market might decrease next year or the following year. But if you keep it for you know x amount of years, you're you're always going to make a, a profit. You know what I mean? And it's I think it depends what market as well too, right? Like Hawaii, yeah, we're gonna we might see a correction, but it might be short and it might not be that deep, right? Whereas Vegas yeah. markets like Vegas or even Tampa, um, like it's going to be probably a steep and longer you know pull than yeah. than we would feel so so it's market specific as well but yeah yeah exactly okay cool what's your thoughts on after us looking you know through vegas and because the numbers are kind of looking like it, we're almost there i mean we could start pulling the trigger right now well i would agree with chris is that you just don't we don't know when the bottom is so <clears throat> i think there's an opportunity right now to actually create your own bottom so figuring out what low offer you want to make and then just start making offers. And uh, even if it's not a long-term hold, Chris was alluding to, you know, if you're going to stay in the property for a number of years, but even if it's a short-term, um, short-term, mid-term type of uh, investment, multifamily play, uh, I think you could make your own deal by making some good offers and then uh, getting the seller to buy the interest rate down as well. I mean, there's a lot of ways to play it. <clears throat> so I think it's good. In fact, Chris, I just teed up another inter production for you. Chris is awesome. awesome He's That's doing good. a great job. Right yeah, yeah, give, awesome. yeah, give Chris a shot. Just take a meeting with him and yeah. Mm. It, it, you'll be you'll you'll open your eyes. So I think um can you guys hear me? Yep. Dante oh, hello? sorry. I just wanted to chime in on the um Las Vegas market. Um I just had some questions for the guys in Las Vegas. Is the rent rental market going down? Like um as far as like the rent rental prices? Because that's what I'm hearing that the, the rent prices are going down in Vegas. Um so I think it depends on what um type of property you have, what the location is. So um our 160 unit, we are not seeing rents go down. We're actually increasing rents. So that's good news. Um let's see, who have I? I've heard from a couple of people who own some duplexes and triplexes kind of near to, uh, it's kind of North Vegas, but kind of more off the, farther away from downtown. And I've heard that their vacancies are harder to fill, so they're reducing it a little bit. I think the main issue right now for most of us is that there are a lot of people applying for the units. But the challenge is, is that they're not necessarily qualifying for the various levels of qualification that we're all setting out there. Um, so I think that's maybe why some are dropping prices is to try to attract somebody who's a little bit um, stronger. All right, got it. Thank you. Yeah, no, but where, I mean, have you seen that differently or have you, what have you seen or what are you, um, what are you, what are you using for data points? That's super interesting. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm using this um, website called, um, hold on, let me check. Like Militich, uh, Mili something, hold on. Sorry, sorry guys. Millichap and something. Yeah, 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 Millichap and something. Yeah, yeah, that, that's it. Um, and it's it, it's showing that the the rental, like um, it's going down. And um, I spoke with a commercial realtor just like yesterday. 
and he informed me that um it seems like the rental market is going down too because i'm looking at one a 32 unit in vegas right now seems pretty good but um their their price is pretty high so i gotta get it down a little a little bit what's more. the uh, what's the list price on it seven million like seven point something but the noi is only 300 something thousand which you know pretty much i got to get half of what they're asking for yeah what's the location it's in 60 it's up north hold so on north man. vegas yeah uh i can give you the address hold on yeah dude i would um i, I that's high it's way too high I mean, yeah, that's why. If you're <clears throat> North Vegas, if you're between a hundred thousand a door to one ten that are fairly renovated, you're probably going to do okay. If you're sub one hundred, so right around ninety five to a hundred with a light rehab, then you're probably going to do okay in North Vegas. That's high level, right? But that's my that's my first metric. When someone sends me a deal, I'm just I look at the price per door and. Um, that one, I would tell you, I wouldn't even, I personally wouldn't even call them because they're, they're so unreasonable, but you know, if you, if you're, if you got the time, you can always try to make an offer at 50% and see if they ever respond. <laughs> yeah, I'll let, I'll let the broker know. Like, Cause I told him it's, it's too high based on, you know, the, the P12 and the NOI it's, I got to get it at least half price. What are you trying to find? Are you trying to find a smaller property for yourself or what are you trying to look for? Yeah, it, um, some something to purchase. So, I either by myself or or majority with everybody else. Gotcha. <clears throat> Shoot me a message. We've got a eight plex and a ten plex coming on. Okay. Okay. Uh, you get my number. I think it's a. If you have the time, like I think it's our duty to make the offer. You know, the market needs to know what the what you know if they're overpriced they need they need to know at some point you know so a simple call be like hey i'm interested in the property but honestly i need to be at this price like is that something this your client would even entertain or is that something that you would even entertain i, I don't think so right like we're way too far <clears throat> at least put it in their brain you know <laughs> make it easier for the next guy because <laughs> maybe the I, next guy's one of us you know <laughs> maybe so yeah it it looks pretty good as far as like um you can you can raise rent and everything but yeah the price that they're, what they're asking for is pretty much when you raise all the rent and everything so they got to come down yeah so tay tay has mentioned said uh that you're seeing yeah it's more about the credit we are in a credit crunch right now because people are borrowing more so their credit limits are going up uh yeah and i think there's some maybe job loss or you know I don't know, relocation needs that really, yeah. Right. It's really affecting that. So uh, we have a lot of showing, but my property manager is like, uh, everyone who's been like showing up to these, they love it. They have the money, but their credit is just like their background check. It just doesn't feel safe enough to you know place them in their their nice you know family and all that but yeah 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 we got to keep eyes on that too i mean i don't think i mean the unemployment wave started this has started to happen but it's more in the tech side you know and uh i don't it doesn't look like we've it's so hard because like they're now they're saying like the data might even be skewed you know because people have multiple jobs like there's they don't they don't know if they can even trust the data so um i would just say stay vigilant you know obviously if you're if you're screening for tenants like i, I wouldn't sacrifice i wouldn't you know move the standards or anything because it's a nightmare when you have to deal with tenants and having to get them out like <clears throat> hey tay so one idea if you're if you're sitting on your property too long i mean the reality is is that every month that goes by you basically lost like a chunk of money, right? Your your cash on cash goes out the door after one month. Um, if there's somebody who comes along who's got really solid income and super solid financials in terms of savings and checking and all that, uh, you might consider giving them a chance um, and just saying, hey, why don't we double the security deposit or triple the security deposit 
and you know I'm willing to give you a shot. And after a year, if you uh, are doing good, you're on time payments, then we'll refund you a portion of that security deposit. So because, you know, sometimes and we've all been there, I think most of us have been we've had a season in our lives where we've had really bad credit and we're just like, oh, we're so embarrassed. This sucks. Uh, and we kind of need somebody to believe in us. So that may be a really good way to do it. And you got to evaluate. Right. And, and your PM should be able to tell you, hey, you know what? This guy's a good guy or this gal seems to be a good gal. So, you know, if they're desperate and they can't get a place, then that's kind of a cool way to help them out. So just an idea. You know, we've all been there, <laughs> right? Like, just like, I hope these guys just give me a shot. Yeah, that's what we're doing on ours. And then, of course, Tay, a couple of other things is uh, we're doing right now. I'm not sure if you guys want um, have this is on our marketing. I'm trying to think it's rent.com. I think we do geofencing. So what we do is anybody who looks up Walmart near us, our ad comes up. Anybody who looks up Amazon, um, because there's an Amazon warehouse that's hiring, uh, when it, they Amazon they look that up for a job, our ad comes up. So it's kind of cool because if they're in our area and they're looking up a job opportunity, we come up right alongside. So that way, in case they're needing to move in, we're one of the first options for them to call. So that may help. And it's not even all that expensive, but we've had our, our lead sources has definitely gone up, our leads uh, per that source. But again, same thing, super hard because you get a lot of people looking and you're just like, oh my gosh, you've got no job, no income, and you need a place to live. It's like, get the job and then come back and let's see if we can help you out. But another, that's, but it's worked for us. We've gotten some, a little better lead that way. Yeah, now more than ever, I think it's time that we got to really trust our gut, you know, but also understand like what our gut is. Like when you have a gut feeling about someone or something, it's like you have to go a little deeper. Like why? Why do, why do you have a gut feeling about Why do I think that this person is, we should give them a shot? Do they have a great smile? You know, like everything, you know, and, and then make your decision. You know, usually your gut is right. 100%. I love it. So our, um, they are forecasting rents to go down though, right? Um, so who's and, forecasting rents to go down? Um, I think it was uh, the bureau. It was the the census that they had come out in. I think it was this November when they did the big rate, the last big rate hike. <clears throat> I mean, I really think it, it has to do with the location of the property and what property you have, for sure. Oh, right and now, also, um, and the MPLA actually had a good um, um, uh, a forecaster on. Shucks, I wish I could have. I can't share that recording, but I'll try to get the data <laughs> and pass it along for next call. It was really interesting. Uh, well, what are you hearing? Are you hearing otherwise? No, no, no. Um, I mean, I think it really depends on your asset. You know, I think that in some ways, because the interest rates are high, there's a lot of people who are not buying. So they're actually renting. And so there's a whole population of people who actually do have some funds who are just waiting to buy. So, I mean, if you have a property that's in a super ghetto area, that may or may not apply to you. But if you've got a decent property in a B area, uh, you're going to probably have some people who are like, I just want <clears throat> to rent something for six to 12 months before I actually start buying again or making offers. So, so I feel like there's actually a lot of demand for rentals right now. I mean, like as Tay said, she had 35 showings in six weeks. I mean, so there's a lot of people out there looking. And so in, in terms Did of- they demand, all not qualify though? Tay? Many of them aren't qualified based on Tay's, rec based on Tay's yeah. level of criteria, right? So got everybody's got different criteria. And if, if she lowered her criteria- then suddenly not lower, not lower right no but you're, if you're, she lowered, about, you're you're mitigating risk by having them come in with more down payment so it's like you're not really you don't want to lower your stat like you want to just correct them adjust them just like when you're buying in in a down market right um no not necessarily it just depends mm -hmm. on like will if we have a ghetto property with not any any renovations like right now some people we recommend if you're going to buy that asset don't renovate it yet just put in some tenants and just get cash flow because right now when you put 10 20,000 per unit in you're not going to get it back out right now 
And why do that with cost right. of goods so high, right. right? So it's like, no, just keep it as is. You got a good deal, rent it as is. So definitely lower your standards, like lower the credit score, lower the income requirements, because you don't need to go so high if all you're doing is trying to get 600 a door or 600 a unit for a two bedroom. You know what I'm saying? Right. And yeah, so we're so saying the same thing because you're still adjusting, right? Because you have to, you, you're maybe you're now you're going for month to month leases with these people instead of six month or yearly, right? You're adjusting somehow. You're but, adjusting down, right? Which then increases the demand, which then drives your rents right. up. <clears throat> yeah, so it's it's ironic, but of her thirty five people, if Tay dropped her requirements, about maybe five of them will suddenly qualify, and then now you've got a bidding war on the rent. So, so, you know, so it's, it's a, it's a different kind of a game, but there are some times in which that strategy works. So it just, so what would be the things that we adjust um, now that are not too crazy? Like I, I like the, you know, doubling up on the, the deposit. Cause if they have the cash, they just don't have the credit right now. Cause maybe they, they have to max out for a little while and they're in between stuff. So they're adding the, the security deposit um would you increase rent um you know i mean if you wanted to and you really liked a tenant and they and you felt like they just have low credit score but their income is super high then yeah yeah maybe they they maybe when you're sitting at the table with them be like you know we're going to give you a chance but here's what it's going to cost you it's going to cost you an extra 25 bucks a month it's going to cost you first and last or it's going to be a double deposit and and some of them will be like you know what I'll do it, you know, because they got the income. And if they have the income and they're not willing to do it, then you're like, well, something's fishy because obviously you're not going to get another place to live. And if you're looking for a great deal and you got crappy credit, you're just, you're not going to find a place, period, um, unless you go into a really crappy location. So yeah, you could totally do a, couple, a few of those creative things. Well, also too, if you know that you're in a state that is, you know, landlord friendly, then perhaps you're, you, you, you set up the guidelines a little more as well right is is uh you're in kansas city right Te? she's in vancouver uh this particular property is in vancouver vancouver washington yeah yes oh, washington's yes. a tenant friendly state yeah? yeah 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 so we're trying to be very careful of, about who we're placing yeah. Well, and the other thing too is that location is everything to if you're going to acquire multifamilies especially now and so Tay's discovering that Vancouver's a good location, but Portland would have been a better location, right? Because there's more demand in a big city. So same with us, you know, we're discovering that it's like, even though we're in North Vegas, for example, there's parts of North Vegas that's a better location because you can actually push rents a little bit more and you're going to get a higher quality tenant. So, um, but Vancouver's a good market. It's like right outside of Portland. Um, and so there's some good... It's it's a good it's a good place, but it's not the big employer. People go into Portland uh, to be the big employer, and then if they work in downtown Portland, there's about thirty miles of potential places they could rent before they come to Tay's place on Thirtieth Street, right? So those other thirty miles of of landlords are doing the same thing, saying, "Hey, I want a good tenant. I'm gonna I'm gonna lower standards or increase rent. I'm gonna make it work for these people." So it's just something that that happens in an economy like this is uh, for all of us, buy in a great location. Like if it's a crappy, that whole saying is true, buy the crappiest house in the best location, and especially during a recession, and it's going to be awesome. But yeah, it's good stuff. I love it, Tay. You're like such a good, uh, you're such a good model, example, story. <laughs> Yeah, don't do what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you well, know, that's a fun you concerned about this one. You don't like this what one? What was that? How come, are you no, concerned about no, this? I, no, no, no. I, I really like, I don't know. I, I really like this. Uh, no, it's okay. Um, I It's just, honestly, I think I did too much last year. I'm barely staying afloat just like with my sanity right yeah mm. too many requests too many demands all day long um right. yeah that was a bit many, too much but how many units do you have right now or total doors are you at tay uh 30 something 
that yeah. means that don't do that ever, ever. <laughs> ever. No, actually, I think you're such a good example for other folks that are on the line that are kind of thinking about the future is, is you're totally right. Like once you hit a certain number of doors, your life really becomes, you move from offense to defense and all day long, it's emails in terms of this issue, that issue, need money, need bills paid. Like there's just so many different components. So um, I, I think you're, yeah. you're a great lesson because systems will be everything yeah. for Tay. And so for anybody who like even Dante, he's looking at these bigger units and such, like make sure you've got a great team and that really helps. Good property managers are good, but the challenge is, is those property managers are going to need you to make decisions and they're still going to email you and call you. And then you're worried that they're not working, right? So Tay's probably thinking, you know, why are we not getting these rented? Because every single month that goes by, I'm losing 800 bucks or 900 bucks per unit. So, I mean, that adds up quick, right? So yeah, systems is huge and um, growth is exciting until you actually have to manage it. And then you're just like, oh my, there's a lot here to have to be done. Yeah. And there's, there's only one way out sometimes and that's forward, <laughs> you know, like it's hard to stop the train once it's rolling. Cause you have a lot of people counting on you. You have obligations, you have contracts to honor. Right. So like the only way is the only way is to win. That's it. There's no other option. <laughs> yeah. You got to go forward. But the other thing I'd say is that um, Tay's probably in a position now going into this next year that she's probably thinking of acquiring more. I'm guessing Tay, that you're thinking of acquiring more, but you're you're tired and you're being more cautious. So the great opportunity that you have is who can I partner with, right? Oh. And so- Oh, I'm totally. Yeah, so I'm assuming that's, that's what Tay is thinking right now. And that's for everybody else, that's super important is it's important to partner when you're brand new, like find a great mentor, find a partner you can trust, get the experience, work alongside them. Then it's true again after you get started. So everybody starts off wanting to learn and they get mentored and get coached. Then we kind of do our own thing for a season. So then we go gangbusters. We're like, we got this, we got this, you know, and we can't wait to add more doors. Then we come back to what we did before, which is I need to partner because if you got a really good oh, partner, yeah. they, they carry more than 50% of the load because not only are they carrying the tasks, they're carrying the mental and anxiety load. Um, we have a, we have a property in Houston that I'm partnered on. It's 41 units and man, this thing is crazy. We just had, we had the sewer line back up again. So we literally have the city calling us. We've got health hazard tickets. We got fines. And what's so cool is the partner is just like, oh yeah, no, we got this, you know? And they're like, yeah, we'll just write a check. I'm like, oh, I just love your perspective because right now I'm like swearing at the wall. So partnership is super important. If you are, if you're starting or when you're growing, always find somebody you can partner with. And then shoot your dog. <laughs> oh, shit. whoa. Where is that <laughs> <come> from, bro? <laughs> but tell you, is that true? So, honestly, uh, yeah, like, like right on, like spot on. I no longer can withstand doing the solo gig. Like, it, it, I'm done. I'm tapped out. I would much rather make way less not way less i would much rather make less a month but share the the mental toll yeah um then like gung-ho on my own and my people might like i'm i'm good i'm so good <laughs> yeah it's so I much it. i love it's it It's so much yeah. like um so because i'm like good at my desk i'm not really i don't know like i like being at my desk and like accountings emails coordinate like that's so much the letters to all the tenants so today we're closing on this, that 13 unit so last night I was up till two making letters uh setting up electric like all of that for mm -hmm. hours I'm like <laughs> if on top of that yeah. I had to worry about um tenant turns and increasing like having that conversation with tenants to increase the rent and then the, all the repair like if on top of that I had to, like no like I would jump off the cliff like no <laughs> well, Tay, like how awesome is it that like I don't know the, all what I heard is just you have have gained so much experience you know and have so much more knowledge now you know like I know it's hard 
and it's fr- like it's frustrating, especially if you're doing it by yourself. But isn't it worth it? I mean, oh man, I stop myself sometimes because I don't know if you guys know my story fully. I've told this a few times, but like I, there was a time when I had like, like I don't know. I think we all have this moment where we're like, I don't know what I want to do with my life, <laughs> you know, like. And that was for me. It was my last year in college, and I just had. A, I remember having a feeling that I wasn't like if I if I died that day, that I wouldn't. It'd be a shame because my family and friends would be sad, you know. Like I, I know I made a difference there, but like nothing would stop. At that time, you know, I, I didn't have people who were counting on me, you know. So I think what I was chasing was fulfillment, and. uh I remember what it felt like to have nothing going on. You know, like I would scroll my phone, like have to go back. It's like, why do I even need a cell phone? You know, I only call my my family or my friends back home. So whenever things get like really hard and stressful and like you're filled with anxiety and stress, like I have to stop myself and put myself back in that other place and just change those feelings of anxiety and stress to gratitude. Because I remember when I had nothing going on, you know, and like all I had was dreams, and um, like and I, I was no Corey's only friend, so it was really sad. <laughs> yeah, no. I didn't like him at all back then. I was just pretending. Yeah, <laughs> it's true for us all. It's all good now. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. And then I got you know my 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 true family and my friends over here. You always got to keep me grounded, you know. <laughs> but yeah for sure like i would always go with the crazy shit storm of a life that we have sometimes than over a life filled with like just mundane you know day-to-day nine-to-five traffic lifestyle you know so i i could i say congratulations to you Tay. that's awesome hey you, take you, a couple more things um use monday.com no try monday.com you got you have enough doors now to start organizing yourself um i'm not sure what systems you're using but that is just such a game changer so just check it out because i i have a feeling you organize your life by file folders and um right and and whole piles of stuff on your desk and that's totally totally get it i've been there as well and when you first start you're just trying to yep exactly right (laughs) yeah i know i know how you're running and it's exhausting the fact that you're writing your own tenant letters like i i kind of want to just reach out and give you a hug because you're living a a nightmare right now but you know what's crazy is i've been there many of us have been there so Um, You know, that old saying, work uh, smarter, not harder. I mean, it's always so cheesy and you're just like, yeah, of course I want to work smarter, but the how is the hard part, right? Like, what do I do? So try monday.com. We do that with all of our, all of our projects. You can have multiple team members in Monday. You're following everything. All your email communications are there. Like it's so much simpler. So all of you. All of you who are getting into bigger stuff, like check out monday.com. It's pretty solid for organization and task management, especially when you got a PM and maybe, you know, co-partners. So it's kind of cool. And then second is if you need anything, please message. Like you get my phone number. Yeah. Like just text. Like, I think so. Yeah. I, I believe that the reason some of us go through what we're going through is so when somebody comes through it behind us, we can fully help them. So that way they in turn can help somebody else. And not that you're behind me by any means, by but but I feel where you've been just by looking at your eyes and, and feeling your pain. It's like, I, I totally get it, you know? And if I showed you my office, you'd be like, yeah, no, I, it's, it's similar to where you're at, but I'm a little bit more organized now. But yeah, I used to color coordinate everything and every everything had files and you got, I mean, you got LLC documents, right? Then you got bank documents for the same property. Then you got checking accounts and then you've got pro- property management agreements and then you've got laundry rental agreements. I mean, like it's just so much stuff, but it's so much, right? It's, it's exhausting. And every day you open your email and you're like, how is it possible that I get a thousand emails a day? It's like crazy. So I get it. So yeah, text if you ever need anything at all. And then if you find a deal in a market that Corey and I like, like we'll hundred percent partner with you. I mean, we, we love partnering with people who write their own tenant letters. 
Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's detail orientedness to a whole that new is level. That's probably what I should do so I can get like an idea of like what real organization is. Um, but but thank you so much. Like I'm I'm a little emotional because it's it's been it's been tough. So thank you. Yeah. No, it, it is tough and it's it gets lonely sometimes, a hundred percent. And then when the finances, like all the bills, and it just feels like some days it's like everybody wants money, like on the exact same day. <laughs> and, you, and you're just literally like, seriously, how is it possible that every one of our properties needs money? You know, and uh, I don't know. I don't know if I, I remember, go ahead. I'm considering offloading a couple of like th they're probably good properties, but you know, when you have like the thorn on your side, like a couple of those with and I won't lose money. So I'm considering maybe offloading that just, just to get rid of the headache. Fine, I, I may lose the cash flow, but I'm also losing big headaches. So why not maybe do that so I can kind of breathe better, take deeper breaths and like, cool, let's let's find the next maybe multifamily. So get rid of a couple of the side thorns, but get like that one deal that's more fulfilling or, you know. So I'm also considering that, so. 100%. Hoping, like, 100%. Yeah. And they're, they're, you know, I, now that I got a taste at the bigger, uh, the bigger building. So just putting it out there, like a single family, whether it's a rental or a flip, it takes months, right? Like you're in it for months. Um, same like a, a multifamily, but the amount of work that it took me to close the 13 or took us, the team to close the 13 unit building was barely more than it takes to close a single family and I'm like well I kind of did in two months what 13 times like what it could take me 13 times on a single family okay granted the numbers are different whatever but it's you know like the amount of work it takes me six weeks to close and whatever turn a single family whereas it took me eight weeks for 13 unit you know, 13 tenants like more work but less time, I don't know. I just feel like maybe this is why I may really start liking the the medium multifamilies and uh, but systems. Like I, I have to get systems in place. The single family, one project at a time, cool, that's manageable, solo. But if I'm going, uh, yeah, I need, we need systems. So this is what I'm thinking. Also a couple, find better deals this this year. And that's 100% actually a great principle is uh, it's been said, drop your bottom 15% and 1031 them into higher performers um, or consolidate, right? So sell two or three of your single families, take all that equity and then go buy a 15 to 35. And, and it, it is ironic. So right now we have a um, five plex in Lakewood in Washington. It takes me more time on that property than our 160 unit in Vegas. Uh, it's crazy because there's economies of scale as you get bigger. I mean, certainly there's a lot, but I mean, you get, you make one toilet choice and it goes 160 times, right? You pick one color and it goes 160 times. So it's, it's different where you flip every house is different, right? And you have to have brain power for every house. So a hundred percent agree with you. We should definitely do a whole um, mastermind around multifamilies. It's, it's such good stuff. Yeah. I'm so happy for you, Tay, because like what I hear is someone who's who's uh, about to hit a gr a growth spurt, you know, like it professionally and like, you know, of course, with your deals and your portfolio. <clears throat> and that's usually what comes with it is like growth is uncomfortable. It's stressful. It's painful. Right. But you're going to break through, you know, and then you're going to like you and your team are going to, are going to level up alongside with that. And it's just the next step, the next step. So it's, uh, it's definitely a, it's like a badge of honor, you know, like we've all been there. Like, it's just, it gets crazy sometimes. Sometimes it gets scary, uh, especially when market conditions are changing so fast and stuff, but uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world, man. <laughs> this stuff is just too fun. It's too fun. As long as you do, you're, you're, you're surrounded with partners and stuff, you know, to, to do it with. And, one thing, like just you even considering that, like, you know, saying goodbye to a few of your projects, even though they're not finished yet, even though there's still money on the table. Like what I hear is a, is a savvy, disciplined investor, 
you know, something's telling you to, that you should do that. So I think you should strongly consider it, you know, like, yeah. And we've, we've all had to make those decisions too. And like, turns out to be the best decisions, you know. It's good. All right, guys. Um, Hey, I got to jump off. You guys have a great, uh, happy Chinese New Year's, all you Chinese out there. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Kung he fa choy. Kung he fa choy. So. Did you guys know Ke Kuo speaks food, like Chinese, by the way? <laughs> Such random Japanese. information. Such random information, but really important when you go to Chinese restaurants. So. Oh, super important. If you're negotiating a deal, too. Oh, he just jumped on. <laughs> Shots. <laughs> Uh, if anybody had Chinese buyers, you know, any K call, just give them a call. No, right on, guys. Well, hope you guys have a great weekend. Happy Aloha Friday. We'll see you guys next week. Aloha, everybody. Hello.